buy you a soda on the way home. Maybe an ice cream if you're good. McFlurry? Diet Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I want a McFlurry right now. Is that product placement? Uh, well, I don't think so. I don't think saying something that you want is necessarily product placement. Plus, is it really bad product placement? I don't know. McFlurries are delicious. What if Burger King is interested? I don't really think... I haven't seen as many Burger Kings in Sweden as no. I had McDonald's. No. I haven't seen more. I know there are, they, they, they exist. What if I, Max is interested? I don't know, man. Ten I don't know. Don't, like, listen, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the professional here. When the Irish guy is trying to be the voice <laughs> of reason... <laughs> I've been doing this for like two weeks. I, I'm a professional at this. Like. Listen, it's the end of the week. It's the last Reserve game time. of the last day. And it's VP Empire, so I mean... 90-10? 90-10. Nah, let's, let's get in the benefit of the doubt. Let's, let's look at the draft. Let's, let's talk some Dota. So, we got Visage Lycan from Empire, which clearly we've seen, actually, I think yesterday. Yes. Um, and it was quite strong. Physical damage output's pretty darn good. They have Rubik, so they have a very solid support to partner with Visage. And then they have a, a very good mid in Puck. This is actually the exact same draft that Team Empire's been running for a long time now. Just like yeah. in Puck. And then they just Rogers throw things Pro's around. And this game pick. is going to be Centaur. <laughs> the man team. I like the Centaur pick, though. Just because... As an offlaner, Centaur doesn't really need to get anything. He just needs to be able to hit six. And then as soon as you have that, you can pop your ulti. And as soon as Puck lands a coil, you're almost guaranteed to get a stomp off. Because by the time the coil breaks, you should very well be in range to be able to use all your spells. And then you have Lycan, who just demolishes people as soon as you get a coil Ten on anyone. And there's remaining. actually maybe only one hero on the side of VP right now who would make a BKB. And that's Five maybe Marana. Remaining. So I don't really see a way for the like Invoker or Nature's Prophet or Bane to really do anything about Puck He's Coil or any type of like stun lock and getting eaten alive by a wolf. So I kind of feel as though Empire may have a slight advantage, even though VP have potential for Rat Dota with Prophet. It's not really that fast until later. Whereas Lycan's ratting is fast from like level seven on, you know, like his damage output is just that much higher. Yeah, I think Team Team Empire is also very versatile in terms of what they do. You talked about the Rat Dota Team Empire Lycan could do that. Team fight control with Centaur as well as Puck. If you want to go for ganks, vicious, and Puck, it's very good for that. Late game, mid game laning. This is why Team Empire has been winning a lot of games. They just have a very very solid draft, and obviously their players are very good. Hmm. I know. Illidan is not going to go right? rageless. I could, I could tell you that. I hope. <laughs> Don't call but it he yet, might man. Max he might max feast. He loves passives, man. You never, you notice Actually, that? Actually, feast max against centaur is like eh, what? No, you could life steal no? someone. No. If you don't max rage against that team, you're going to get silenced. Right, you need to max mean, rage. You need to max rage. Stunned, but I think, the, I, I think the true success of this game. It's G. He has to take us back to 2012, where he just completely put a stick up in everybody's butt. What? With a storm. With a storm? With a storm. I didn't see them. I don't he know. was like really good storm. Yeah, he basically went like 22 and two each game, each and every game, and uh, it wasn't even close. Five he was a space maker, three. man. Yeah. G, take us it? back, man. I don't know why. Take a walk on the wild side. Why you were considered the best player, mid player? Did they get the Centaur for the ulti? Because this team doesn't seem like it needs a Centaur ulti. When I look at it, I think they like well, him, him, Puck, they are like so fast and... I don't think it's necessarily that you need the ulti, it's just nice to have. Because there's an alternative method, like say during the early game, Silence like trying to push a tower or something, and early ranks of Shapeshift have relatively long cooldown, like your uptime on the ulti is shorter, right? So you have more time where you're actually susceptible to leading gank. You can use it to escape. You can have him push whenever he wants and just have like that backup plan and say, oh yeah, we can just get away for free. Because really, there's only one guaranteed stun outside of um, outside of Invoker, and that's the Marana arrow. So that's it's not even be, guaranteed. I mean, yeah, it's it's not a guarantee, but I'm saying like Cold Snap is pretty much a it's a stun. Like right. you can't really say it any other way. And then you have like Tornado and Deafening, which is kind of a stun, but not really. So I really uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. VP's lineup seems so... It seems greedy in the wrong way. And that's never good. Mm. It's so wrong. Make it right. <laughs> I, what I mean by that is by greedy in the wrong way. That there's I couldn't lineups... follow up because I have no idea what that meant. Okay. I, I kind of figured. But what I mean is they're greedy in a way where it's not going to pay off for them 
at any the point in the game. Begins. Okay. Like, what, about, what about like super? Okay. Lichen? What is their what is their game plan mid? Because the life stealer can't fight a team with a lichen. Centaur can just ult to get them away from any bad engagement, and then you have initiation with puck. So, what point in the game does VP's lineup really function? Like, what are they good at? Yeah. I don't know. The bane. Like, if an arrow hits, he's gonna hit the sunstrike. Like, I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking. They can push, but not really as fast as Empire can push. They can fight, but honestly, Empire's strategy is a little bit easier to execute than theirs. They have a hero who is just straight up countered by mass movement speed, which Mag will be able to give them in the form of just being able to run away. But, oh, Silent could be in trouble top. Maybe not expecting the tri lane. This is a really awkward tri lane as well. Always want to black him the side. Van scores that as well. He's going to get the first, but looks oh. like Empire get away with it. Now, Arsart and Jotam both in some trouble. Jotam going to be running back and using a tango. <laughs> I don't think anybody expects the tri-lane nature's, nature's profit yeah. with boots. So, well, I don't think VP expected that damage output because that how just shredded it. The Marana, he just died during the lift. Well, yeah, he, he got air at level one because they wanted to try to go for the kill. Well, he wasn't even put down, so he could leap away. If he had leap, he just got lifted and died. Yeah, it was insane. Also, Visage with the, like he always put up so much damage at the side of the game. You never expected like. I don't know, man. What's wrong with you, Andy? There's nothing wrong. I'm, I'm just I'm looking at VP's lineup, and I'm just going it over, or going over it in my head, and I'm thinking, what yeah, are the they going to do? What, is, what are they going to do? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, they're going to offensive trolley with the Prophet and support Morana. I think support Morana actually is a hero that could be exploited more in terms of a competitive scene, but not, not the way that this game is starting. I mean, hero. After a nightmare, does actually do a fairly decent amount of damage. Doesn't fluff and stuff play uh, support Morana? Yes, he used he to. He was one of the first, I think, to actually yeah. did that. But TI2. My question is, why doesn't VP just leave NS top, send Arsar to the woods, where he can actually get some guaranteed farm and a very much needed experience because he's just about to hit level two right now, which is not great, and then just have the Bane help mid? I mean, if you enfeeble the puck, resolution is not going to be able to do really anything in the 1v1 and you give G some very much needed space so he can actually get his feet off the ground, you know? Alright, Andy, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Okay. I want you to look at Life Stealer and Skill Build and tell me what you think. <laughs> He's doing it, isn't he? Uh... He's maxing feet. Look, he's winning the lane, man. Yeah, but in the 1v1, it makes sense. I can't actually say that that's a bad thing, but I don't know if he's going to go more than two points into it. Uh, he's gonna go. He's gonna go two do you, two do one. Do you think he's gonna go ham? No, I think he's gonna go. He's gonna just take rage now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the mid lane, though, looks like Phase has already been baited. They're gonna right click on Resolution. He's oh, he can't orb. The Sunstrike's gonna hit. They're gonna go up and predict the orb. But Resolution's out of there. Well played by Resolution. Yep. Very nice escape. And now that they see that the Bane is mid, there's no reason why Empire can't play aggressive on this top lane. The only problem is they have to go on our side because NS will just simply leap away. It's just a, it's a tough lane to kill once once NS gets level two. And Arrow, ooh, wanted to get that uh, stun off. So he missed. I like Orb of Venom and Lifestealer in this scenario. It's so good for chasing people down. Yeah. It's a moment of truth, guys. He's about to level up. Moment of Truth might actually be top if they can catch anybody. Maybe close though. Oh, yeah. Two points. Range. Yeah, okay. So he's not maxing fees. That makes more sense. <laughs> I don't even understand the second point. It's like 1%. Hey man, you ever hear the saying, the 1%? You want to be that guy. You want the extra 1%. It makes perfect sense. I don't know. I, I actually have no idea why I did that. But um, he's still winning his lane pretty hard, so. Can't really question it thus far. He's 22 and 8 compared to the 12 and 0 of Mag. But this is a lane that Lifestealer should win, mm. ideally. So, Yeah, he's going to win it harder once he gets this double damage. Not sure it's worth the trip down the mid lane, though, or down the river. But he's denying that rune, obviously, from Puck. How, how is our Invoker doing, and what kind of build does he need to go in this game to actually have an impact? Are we going to see a Hannah Midas? Are we going to see a quick blink? Or are we going to see a little bit more of a standard? We'd upgrade into like a Yule's or Force F. I think four staff is pretty necessary here. If you don't have a four staff against that team, you're going to get mauled. The thing is, if you get caught by a disable, like if you get lifted or you get bird stunned, maybe even coiled, you you could just be dead to rights unless you have an, uh, an item that's going to get you farther away from the action. And since he's going Exort, which I think is the right call, top lane though, got him. He's going to get telekinesed and just explodes pretty much. NS 
probably going to be forced to leap away. The howl damage bonus is it's ridiculous. Insane. It's insane. With they, three heroes right-clicking? Yeah. They hit the, so hard. And the babies as well. Don't forget the babies. Yeah, and unlike Chilling Touch from Ancient Aberration, your attack does not get slowed down. A single lift gives you enough right-click time to get off one or two right-clicks, and then a soul assumption to follow through. That is enough damage to kill any hero. Pretty insane. Yeah. So... The Trilane Prophet who's maxing his teleport. Um, what? Uh, I don't I don't know. I just don't know. Um, send those level 6. Shane, help me. I, I, I don't know what's help going on. Help me help you. Well, he wants to teleport around the place oh, and get top. the gangs going. He's going to fly and some trouble on the river. Oh. Hey, the sun strike. Here He's comes the trouble. though. They want to try to turn it around. NS still has leap. Lift's going to be able to land. Vanscor gets it off. Oh Fate Bolt's there. It's going to be always want to fly with the killing spree. Tree in the river. Empire looking very strong. Yeah. I, I think this is why Empire always second pick Lycan or first pick Lycan. It is just insane trialing. Can can we say that again? Lycan is a trialing hero. He really is. Yeah. And the crazy part, it's only one point into Howl, Mag. Gonna find G mid. Coil's there as well. Here comes the Stomp and the Double Edge. Gonna get the kill. Artsart, he wants to go for Always Wanna Fly. He will be able to put Virtus Pro on the board, but I think he might end up paying with his life here. Fan score, high ground lift. He's gonna keep Artsart in the same place. Boom. Give Mag the double. The Double Edge, that is. There are points I'm talking about. Oh, you have Mag. I do indeed. Right. There you go. You already beat James. Now. The game is over. Yeah, but it's not like kicking someone when they're down. Oh, arrow coming out. <laughs> resolution. Gonna face shift, dodge it. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine. So yeah, th this game is pretty much entirely reliant on mid and the lifestealer, I think, at this point. And sure, the lifestealer is getting a lot of farm, but I, I don't see how he's supposed to have a huge impact in these fights. I don't know who he goes on. I mean, the Rubik is pretty much the only target where he can say, okay, I can kill this guy, you know, in a rage. Yeah. But that's assuming that the Centaur doesn't just ulti to get his support yeah. to safety. I, I actually don't think this life healer can get any kill unless Empire overcommits. And Empire is just getting to a stage where the, the supports are picking up so many items. Once you pick up like a Boots Upper Embracer, you could just kind of laugh at the life healer. He may kill you, but he's going to take such a long time that your teammate is going to either rescue you or kill the life healer. You'll die laughing. Not only that, but if your supports are far enough, you're going to get early ghosts. And yeah. when you get ghost scepters, then all of a sudden Life Stealer actually just doesn't do anything. Yeah. Same with Lycan, though. And that's really painful. That's the one thing about Life Stealer that sucks is when the supports and the other team actually have a decent amount of farm. You start seeing four staffs and ghost scepters, and because that hero is so reliant on killing a hero in the duration of rage, if you can't do it anymore, because you get negated by a force or a ghost, then all of a sudden your hero is just a, w a walking melee creep, like you don't do anything. It's really tough, actually. In normal circumstance, even if the support don't have ghosts, can you actually right-click supports when there's a big bad wolf right-clicking you? Like, <laughs> Well, ideally, no. You you wouldn't be able to do that. But yeah. there's situations, obviously, in team fights where you're not always going to have that exact scenario. You sure. know what I mean? So who do you think wins? Like. In a man battle between Lycan like and destroys Life Stealer. Yeah, not like close. Just destroys him. The thing is, Life Stealer's damage early on is percentage based on HP, of course, because attack. he has feast. But he gains Radiance a little bit of attack speed. The thing is, when Lycan like ults, he gets base attack time, health, and crit chance, and he has wolves. <laughs> so you can't really just stand there and tank it. It's it's just way too much damage. And Life Stealer doesn't really have the greatest base armor either. So, well, Virtus Pro is going to try to strike on the bot and. Get a little bit of thing. Action working there, a single TP can stop the push. I think at this point you have to. Oh, looks like Coil is going to drop on the mid. She yeah. is. Goodbye. Yeah. Not even close. There was some teleport reaction maybe going to come in, but uh, looks like they decided to cancel it. I mean, that gang literally reminded me of what happened uh, when RTZ got ganked by the CM and Naga. Just walked up and just threw some spells and got the kill. You remember that from game two? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just too easy. Like, there was no reaction. It's not looking good for VP. Yeah, I don't know what the game plan was. Like, I saw their lineup, and I'm thinking to myself, how do they lane this in a way where they could come out ahead during the early game? And I was just drawing a blank. Like, I had no idea. Here comes an arrow that Vanscore should very easily be able to dodge. He's going to get sprouted. No tangos. Here comes a lift onto Illy.
of him. He is going to be going down like Lando Tower. No, the Centaur ulti saves him and shot him. He's actually going to get turned on. Always want to fly with a teleport support. And now he's actually going to be in some trouble as well. Mag, he gets a killing spree in the meantime, managing to take out NS and Arsart dies as well. There is a life stealer in these creeps, boys. <laughs> He's panicking. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. He's sweating. Oh. oh, he pops out. He wants to go for Mag. He's got uh, open wounds available. And wow, Infest stolen by Vanscore. What a player. We're going to see some next level Vanscore Infest. This is going to be fun. He's going to heal up. He's going to Infest into one of his heroes, like a Puck maybe. And uh, yeah. The Vanscore bomb is coming. Infest always reminds me of, you know, that Ace Ventura movie when he gets inside the rhinoceros? And it's really, really hot. Do we need to rehash this? Is this something that needs to be done? Because I, I think everybody knows where you're going, and I don't want to go there. I love that bit. It's oh. awesome. Looks like Silent's going to be in some trouble. He should be able he to pop his space shift. Oh. Oh, he's going to get nightmare though, I think, oh, in the Sunstruck. Oh, he goes around the tree. Here comes wow, Resolution, gets a double coil, but he actually runs oh, into an arrow, so, so Silent now going to be in some trouble. He will be able to get out of the Sprout, but unfortunately gets hit by the Sunstrike. The rest, Avertus Pro, currently on full retreat. Illidan, he has no mana to speak of right now. Double damage to Resolution, Infest? doing some damage. Vanscore, he wants to kill in a oh. long distance zap. That range, man. Oh my god. Unbelievable, and always want to fly out also manages to get a kill on Arsart in the meantime with those birds in the river. So, 3 to 12 in favor of Empire. No tower has actually gone down Dyer's yet on either side. They lost the Lycan, though. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, Radiant's it's just weird to see like that many kills and no one's killed a tower yet. Yeah, yeah Lycan actually shouldn't even die there. He had Quelling Blade the whole time, but he sat inside a straw for like a full second to line up for that Sun Strike. Maybe but... he thought it was safe in yeah, this Back bro. in the mid lane, though, look at the oh! Mystic Birds is coming right in long distance oh, zap one. from downtown. Van score. What is up with goes. these like thousand range zaps? It does have a fairly long range. Radiant's yeah, but that was, I don't know, man, that was pretty ridiculous so double blink now on empire we got a blink on resolution we got a blink on mag the initiation potential from empire has just shot through the roof they have good tower pushing with the lycan that hero alone just makes your team a push team i mean honestly that's just how good at it he is he's gonna be doing rush in the meantime so i i, I don't know what vp are supposed to do i don't know you got me well they're farming the jungle they're trying to get the a little Dyer's bit. Yeah, but the thing is, if you're farming the jungle when the other team, well, farming, I mean, that's nice. You managed to get an arrow. Well, so that one's actually pretty darn low. He's getting hit by the Nature's Wrath as well. But uh, yeah, he gets an Aegis. But what I was saying is, if you're playing against a team that has an advantage, and they're taking an objective, like they're pushing a tower, or they're getting Roshan oh, sunstrike? at Sunstrike, just barely misses. But if you're doing one of those two things, and you're farming your woods, you're doing it wrong. Because you're not actually getting an advantage. And here comes Jotham. Just explodes. That was your kill, Mike. Your Listen, Resolution is a my team, <laughs> so clearly it was his kill. But yeah, if you're not counter pushing the lanes, you're not like forcing the equilibrium in your favor, then you're just straight up losing out. You're not benefiting in any way, shape, or form if you're VP in that situation. Yeah, I, I wonder if this game is just Virtus Pros are testing thing as we see a, a 13 minute minus finish on Arzart. Like, I'm not understanding the teleport max, or at least the emphasis on teleport when he wasn't teleporting around much. From Binde, Van Score! Go! Oh, oh, he dodged dodge. around it, but the, regardless, the Mirana arrow is going to get the kill. That fucking dodge! I mean, player. I don't think he knew it was coming, but he just like kind of walked around. Who walks like that when they're walking away from the I don't know, team, man. Also, like NS, his skill bill, he's got like arrow max. I guess he's worried about his mana pool. I, he's I, by the way, there's no I, reason I, I arrow talked, max. I talked to the authority figure on, Mar Radiant's on Marana Singh, and I asked attack. him, I'm like, why do people do it? And he goes, there's literally no reason to ever max this skill. Well, in this case, he's a support. He doesn't have any mana items. He has a it doesn't or, matter. It doesn't matter because Starstorm does more damage in the terms of it hits more people. Hmm. It has the potential to hit twice if you're close enough, it which is why most people max it. Arrow does more damage if you hit them once. Well, if you hit them from max range, like the bonus damage from the range and the arrow doesn't increase as you level it. It's just the damage of the arrow itself that goes up. But the thing is, Starstorm hits twice. Yo, so it's AOE. And yeah, it's yeah AOE. I understand that. <laughs> So yeah, I, there's actually no reason to do it. For once, it's not Illidan that's effing up the skill builds. I mean, you gotta be really confident in your arrow capabilities to max it. I never miss. Radiant's I think I have like a 40% win rate with Murana. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great.
Definitely not great. Speaking of not great, a BP are definitely fallen. struggling here in this game. They're going to lose their second tier one tower. This time it's going to be mid. And bottom's going to go down too. So they actually just lost two towers very, very quickly. <coughs> I think they're going to lose a little bit more. Tier two is uh, dropping oh, down quick. Looks like they're going to try to answer back on the top lane. Oh, always want to fly. He's got a mech, man. He can't even kill him. There's Stupid. no way. Not a chance. He's see me to his tier two. It's like, yeah, I'm not even going home. But here comes Max <laughs> teleporting back in. The birds is gonna hunt the life around Radiant's a little bit. Meanwhile, tier oh. two tower is gonna go down. Coil does hit on two, and Jotam is gonna get right clicked down by Mag or Silent Silent. He wants Dyer's more, and this is dead. Is They're just raxing. Only. 15 minutes Dyer's in. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Are fortified. Yeah, pretty good hero, guys. He runs really quickly, which is... He's also a wolf. Yeah. Lift was popped. Can see a teleport coming in. It's going to be Illidan. If he wants to go for Silent, there is still an Aegis, though. So the Aegis is going to get popped. Open oh. wounds stolen by Fanscore. Very interesting spell to have. Here comes the Silence. Resolution going in. Here's the Lift. He's going to get the open wounds off, and there's the kill. Fanscore actually manages to pick it up. Now Empire are currently in retreat. Sentry Ward. Now they're on the re Goose plant. Don't even worry. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if they wanted to go back in. But, uh, nah, they're gonna relax. Enjoy the win. Yeah, this is... This is very lopsided, I must mm. say. Yeah, I wouldn't even look at the graph. It's probably pretty filthy. The Let's life stealer, the he's had oh. free farm pretty much the whole game. But he can't do anything. Like, the reason why solo core life stealer kind of fell off is because the hero becomes a liability against teams that get ahead. And their supports especially. Because we saw him attack always want to fly, and he's just like, okay, I actually can't even kill a support. I mean, he is yeah. so far ahead. And he has a high level in Gravekeeper's Cloak. Yeah. So. I really yeah. like the spell of actually just leaving Grave Show at one point. If you're this ahead, just getting the more survivability means you're just not dying. Period. Yeah. I agree with that. Oh, teleport coming in. Arsar wanted to try to go in through the back. The Nightmare. On the wolf, and always want to fly, gets a kill on an S, and Chatham is just getting annihilated, man. Like, what is he supposed to do against that? She was forced to ghost walk. And, uh, yeah. life is looking pretty hard if you're VP, man. Top tower is under attack. Well, I asked you to take us back in 2012, where he stomped everybody. Unfortunately, he took us back to 2013, where he got stomped in China. Radiance top I took it well for a while. Fallen. Yeah, until people well, the, the caught onto his TAs yeah, and uh, and the Luna thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, more blanks coming out. Two more. One an Invoker. Dyer's one Rubik. Under attack. Oh, how, how do you win if you're the Radiant? What do you do? Like, I'll say you need to win this game. It's, what do you do? I'm pretty sure if you had a gun to my head and asked me to win, I don't think I could do it. There has to. There's some way. What about like infest into Mirana and she leaps in, blows everyone up with the <laughs> one level stuff? <laughs> <laughs> with the max arrow build? What a sick plan, man. Remind me never to play with you. Playing Marana. You put a uh, one level of assassin. That's kind of destroyed my whole plan. I don't know. I don't really think there's a way that they can do anything. It kind of... It sucks to say it, but it's it's like... How do you theorize VP coming back? They have to defend the base. That's step one. Yeah. Defend the base. And then step two can come after that, if you can defend the base. But there's an Ecker 3, and Howl, and Visage Birds. And Illidan pops out, but he really can't do anything on his own. Blink in from G, but he throws an Ice Wall down to just commit suicide, basically. Four staff out, Coil lands on two. Meatball gonna do quite a bit of damage to Empire, actually, but NS, he goes down. Arrow, actually stolen by Vanscore, connects onto the Lifestealer, and Illidan immediately calls GG. That was as well as they could have fought it. Radiant's Being down by so much gold, that was a good fight on their side. But uh, I gotta say, I don't know if I would use the words as well as it could have been fought because being G down by 15,000 gold, G blinked into Ice Wall and he didn't die first. Yeah, it was a miracle that he didn't die first. I think because the Ice Wall was pretty good. Yeah, Ice Wall and Tomato, okay, okay. they did I'm as not, much damage. I'm as not arguing to. that the Ice Wall was a bad Ice Wall. I'm saying that the fact that he blinked into Ice Wall because he was at that point in the game. He blinked in an Ice Wall and then he looked over an NS and saw level 1 Starstorm and said,